Hello, welcome to another video. Today, as you can tell from the title, I am bringing you my January wrap up. I am filming this a little ways into February. I'm actually filming this during Polathon because I know if I wait any longer, I'm gonna forget absolutely everything about everything. And to be honest, it's been a while since I read some of these. So I already may have forgotten a fair bit. So sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I will try and go through these in the order that I read them, but I might get lost somewhere. I read a total of eight things in January. Six of those were for TBR Pursuit, so I did complete January's TBR Pursuit, and then two of those were additionals. One was being carried over from December, and one was just a random pick-me-up sort of thing. So uh, yeah, we will just go through them, I suppose. <laughs> the first thing that I read in January, my first read of 2020 as well, wow, was The Way Past Winter by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is a middle grade book about a young girl who wakes up to find that all of the boys in her village have gone missing, including her brother, and certain clues may lead them to believe that they followed a stranger to the coldest part of the north. With the help of a boy mage called Rune, Mila, who is our main character, goes on a bit of a quest to find them and rescue them and bring them home. This is full of lore and fairy tales and a little bit of magic here and there and I did enjoy it a fair bit. It didn't have an overwhelming impact on me, um, it's not one that I think is going to stick with me for a long time, but I did enjoy it whilst I was reading it and in the spirit of Polathon this would have been a perfect Polathon read. It's it's got those like polar fantasy vibes with them traveling to the coldest part of the north and the like northern mythology and fairy tales and folklore that's woven throughout it as well would have been perfect for that so really it's got all of the ingredients for a book that I love it was just missing some sort of connection for me I didn't feel as wholly invested as I would have wanted to perhaps the atmosphere wasn't built up to be what I, what I know I love. Um, overall I gave it a three star rating, which is not bad. I am using Core Pile uh, this year. That, that is um, G Book Roast's rating system. She's done a video all about how it works with a spreadsheet that you can download. So my ratings may be a little bit harsher because I know it's harder to get higher ratings using the Core Pile system. Bear that in mind with my ratings. Um, and if you wanted to check out Core Pile, if you haven't, then please check out G's Core Pile video. I will link it down below because I know someone's bound to ask what core pile is because every time I mention it someone does. So that is the rating system that I am using and it came out at a three star on that. So by no means bad but not a new favourite of mine. A quick read um, and this edition is beautiful with these sprayed edges as well. <laughs> Love it. I do recommend it though, if you want a quick uh, middle grade read that is kind of woven into that like northern folklore then yeah, I enjoyed it. Next up we have The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nizrana Farouk. This was the first middle grade monthly book. Uh, we had our live stream in January where we discussed this in some depth, so if you're interested in the in-depth discussions around this then I will link the um, live stream down below for you as well. That was over on Gavin's channel in January. So yeah, we were discussing this for like an hour and a half, so if you do want some like in-depth thoughts then that's the place to go. But this follows a young girl called Chaya who stole the Queen's jewels and is then shocked that she gets into some sort of trouble for that, um, despite having all of the best reasons for her actions. Thief, Rebel, Bandit, a hero. Chaya can talk her way out of anything except stealing the Queen's jewels, even if she had the best of reasons. So she escapes on the back of a stolen elephant and leads her friends on a jungle adventure where leeches lurk and revolution is stirring. The plot at the beginning seemed to go very quickly, like you're thrown into the action immediately, it's high stakes like straight off the bat. And then the plot kind of takes a twist halfway and goes that one a bit more like political revolutionary direction. I don't want to spoil it so I don't want to 
say anything about that, but it wasn't entirely what I was expecting and I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. The main character was actually quite unlikable for a lot of this, although she does potentially learn her lesson later on. I just didn't love it as much as I would have wanted to and on Core Pile I think this came out at a low three stars for me. But as I say, if you want in-depth thoughts on this then the live stream will be linked down below for you where you can see me and Gav chat for ages on this one. <laughs> I was then falling behind on my Goodreads goal, so I picked up a comic and that is uh, The Steel Prince Volume 2, Knight of Knives by Victoria Schwab. Um, and I think this is the lowest rating I've ever given anything by Schwab. I gave this one three stars as well. It wasn't as good as anything else. I think the premise of this was interesting and if this was developed as like a full novel from her, then I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more. I feel like there was so much more to be developed and a lot of information that you just can't get in a comic that I would have wanted. Um, and of course it's not Schwab's usual format. She writes novels, now she writes comics as well. But I think I'm learning that I don't like her comics as much as I like the novels. It relies a lot on the fact that you already know the world, you already know how the magic works because you've already read the prequel trilogy, the Dark Shared Magic trilogy, um, because this is of course a spin-off of that. So yeah, it relies heavily on the fact that you already know a lot about the world and the magic, etc. But it just didn't hit me the way Schwab usually hits me, despite the fact that it was a really interesting premise. And as I say, if it was expanded as a novel or if she wrote a novel where the event that happens in this were to happen and could be expanded upon then I think I would really love that because the event that happens in here, the Knight of Knives, is really interesting. It's like a tournament to win honour I suppose um, but it's like impossible. There's four stages of this impossible trial um, but yeah I didn't love it as much as I wanted to unfortunately. <laughs> My neighbour's just decided to start drilling his wall. Or is he sanding it? I don't know. What are you doing and can you please stop? <laughs> I'm gonna have to come back and finish filming this video later when he's stopped. <laughs> Apologies if the angle or anything is different, I had to take a break whilst my neighbour apparently sanded down his entire house, um, but I'll just try and pick up where I left off. <laughs> and that is with Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. This was one that I, I didn't really know too much about, hadn't heard anything about it, and then when I was sorting out my Goodreads TBR, I noticed that it had an abnormally high average rating for a book that I had not really heard anything about, anything good or anything bad. It just seemed to have slipped entirely under the radar, but had a really good average rating on Goodreads. So I threw it into TBR Pursuit and thought, we'll see what that's all about. And it surprised me a lot. It had way more paranormal elements to it than I thought it would. What I knew about this going into it is that our main character, um, I can't remember her name now, Sarah, is going to like the spring, spring welcoming or something but she's going to win the heart of the prince. She's gone to the palace as almost a suitor but she is there for the prince's heart literally like to tear it out of his body and claim it. So I knew it was going to be a little bit brutal from that but yeah I had no idea despite the fact that it's in the blurb that Zara is actually an immortal heartless creature that is like the servant of a witch. When I found that out I was like whoa <laughs> yes yes please and I was really into it for like the beginning portion. It then kind of took a turn and became a bit more of a romance story than I would have liked it to be and 
wasn't as brutal as it was to start with and then at the end it became brutal again so it was kind of a bit of a mishmash there were parts of it that I liked parts of it that I didn't but the like heavy romance aspects weighed it down a little bit for me and overall I gave it a three star but I definitely had a good time reading this it surprised me I was hooked the intrigue was completely there but the plot was just a bit wavy for me at times but yeah took me by surprise I kind of get the average rating on Goodreads now like I can see where that's come from because I can definitely see why a lot of people would really like this just the overbearing romance was a bit much for me so three stars overall but if you're curious I would recommend it because it took me by surprise and there were parts of it that I did really like like the fact that she's an immortal heartless being that wants to rip the heart out of the prince's chest quite literally I then read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I was buddy reading this with Pris and Gavin and it was my first exposure to Brandon Sanderson and holy shit I loved it so much. Five stars. Doing this in Core Pile, like it was so highly marked across the board. I adored this so much. The characters were so compelling. The plot had me hooked completely. I was just so there for it and I was concerned with Brandon Sanderson's writing because I know he is like a fantasy lord, everyone loves his books. I expected it to be a little bit more densely written, I, I don't know, I was intimidated by it because I thought his writing style was going to be a bit more intense but it really wasn't, it was so easy to read, so easy to follow and the pacing was just so quick for, you know, not a small book. I feel like I was just flying through this and having the best time. So if you are not familiar with what Skyward is about, it's about a young girl called Spencer who wants to be a pilot in, like, Space Force. It's set on another planet and that planet is constantly being attacked by the Krell and the, like, first line of defence against them, the Space Army. I'm sure there was a name for that. <laughs> uh, but she wants to be a pilot to fight the Krell and defend her planet. However, her father is famed for being a coward and um, fleeing in the face of a fight and that shame has carried on to Spencer through her life and she is not in a position where they will allow her to join the pilots because of her father's treachery, betrayal, cowardice. Um, so yeah, all of Spencer's dreams are crushed on that. But the way things are progressing with this war means that Spencer may have an opportunity to become a pilot and um, fight the war she's always wanted to participate in. I really don't want to say anything else because I don't want to risk spoiling it. The point is Spencer wants to be a pilot and wants to fight this war and her father's cowardice has put a shadow over her her entire life and not let that come to fruition. Things are getting worse and Spencer may just be able to get up in the air. I love this so, so much um, and yeah for my first Brandon Sanderson read I gave it five stars and I cannot wait to read the sequel. I haven't got to it just yet, I really want to um, and it kicks off one of my goals for 2020 to make this year the year I'm exposed to Brandon Sanderson because I've read one of his books now. Hooray! <laughs> Next I picked up The Ten Thousand Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. I buddy read this with Pris as well. This was fantastic. I really loved the atmosphere in this. It was incredible. You may know that it's a book about a book which seems to be a big trend at the minute. Everyone loves books about books and I am one of those people. I adored this, the plot, the characters, ugh, fantastic. This is about a girl called January. As a biracial young girl, she's put into the care of a powerful white man and her father, who is black, is not forced to work for him but encouraged to work for him and go on journeys for him to find rare trinkets and things. <laughs> January is constantly kind of at war with herself about where she belongs and she's forced to grow into a young woman that she doesn't necessarily want to be. Um, when she was younger she found a door and now she's a little bit older she's found a book 
and that book leads her to doors and there may or may not be 10,000 of them. <laughs> Um, I don't know what more to say about this because I really don't want to spoil it, but very, very whimsical, completely out of this world. The atmosphere is incredible and the emotion in this is just incredible. I really felt for January and all of her like hardships, the struggles that she goes through, the loss that she feels. Her lack of belonging is just so hard-hitting and I loved this and then mix in all of the whimsy and the magic of the doors and other things that I won't mention because I don't want to spoil it. It was just absolutely incredible and I loved it so much. Putting it through Corpile, it did come out at a four star but it was a very, very high four star. I loved it. <laughs> um, I can't remember what brought it down on Corpile so much. Maybe it was just like eights across the board like wasn't blown me out of the water sort of amazing it was very i want to say small like for my personal taste the brian can you not why for my personal taste in books, the books that tend to get five stars from me tend to be very big, like exploring worlds at war and there being some sort of political element in there, being lots of action and magic, etc. And it didn't cover like all of those elements that I love, it was more the like delicate whimsy. And I, I did really enjoy it, like, as I say, it came up at a high four star and I completely recommend it, it was very emotional. And I know Pris cried. I didn't cry. Pris did though. <laughs> um, it was really beautifully written and I do completely recommend it if, if you're on the fence for any reason. I had a beautiful time reading this. Gonna try this again now that the neighbour might have quieted down a little bit. But the next book that I read in January was The Starless Sea by Erin Morganston. This was the read rate review pick for January and the live show has happened. It was on my channel so again I will link that down below for you if you want to hear us chat all about this. But overall I gave this a four star. It was beautifully written as one would expect from Erin Morganston. I was really intrigued and again similarly to The Ten Thousand Doors of January the like whimsy was so like atmospheric. I loved that element of it. However, the plot on this one was just a bit foggy. It was a bit n too nonsensical almost. It didn't make a lot of sense at all. But I still found myself really enjoying it. There were characters in here that I really enjoyed and the like fairy tales and fables scattered throughout this because again it's a book about a book like our main character finds a book and book and that book leads them to doors like it has a very similar plot to the ten thousand doors of january in both of these main character finds a book book leads them to a door door leads them to another plane of existence very similar and i read them both at the same time so whoa <laughs> but the plot on this one was just a little bit foggier and a little bit more nonsensical. Still came out at a four star on Corpile though, um, just slightly lower than the 10,000 Doors of January. The characters I really enjoyed, the locations I really enjoyed, it was very visual, it was really imaginative but just lacked that little bit of sense to like keep you totally in there if that makes sense but still beautifully written. I can understand why people wouldn't like this and I can understand why people would love this and I'm closer to the love side but not totally there. So yeah four stars for this one but as I say there's a whole live stream about it so I will link that down below if you want to hear the read wrote review gang chat about that if you missed out on the live show you can see it linked down below. And then finally my favourite book of the year so far. I'm not going to call it my favourite book of the year because I have in my mind what I think that's going to be. My favourite book of the year so far and therefore my favourite book of January, the last book that I read, is Saint's Blood by Sebastian de Castell. Does this surprise anybody? I gave this five stars. I absolutely adored this 
so much. This is the third book in the Great Coat series. The second book, Night Shadow, was my favourite book of 2019, so really I knew I was gonna love this. This isn't a surprise to anybody. It's It was written in the stars that I was gonna love it. <laughs> obviously. Sebastian de Castell is one of my absolute favourite authors. I love his writing style. It's witty, it's sarcastic, it's everything that I get along with. But whenever I talk about Sebastian de Castell I feel like this is all things that I've said before so I don't want to totally bombard you with like the same thing. But the politics, the plot twists, the intensity, the action, the magic, the brutality, the sarcastic and witty writing style, how much I have grown to care for all of these characters. I absolutely love this. If you are not familiar with what The Great Coats is about, um, it starts with the Traitor's Blade. It follows Falcio, Kest and Brasti, who are fallen Great Coats. The King was murdered and the Great Coats fell and Falcio still holds dear all of these values and the Great Coats last wish from their kings, they were each given like a secret final task and they are pursuing those tasks and I don't want to say anything more than that because literally anything else will spoil the first book but the three of them go on some wild adventures and get wrapped up in all sorts of politics and brutality and oh, so much. It's like impossible to encompass. Absolutely fantastic. Adore it a lot. Um, so yeah, if you have not read this series, oh gosh, do it. They're fantastic and um, Sebastian de Castell is a fantastic author. So yeah, five star absolutely adored it. Fantastic. Yes. 10 out of 10. Would recommend. And there you go. That is everything that I read in January. It's taken me far too long to film this video because of the outside disturbances. <laughs> but I hope you have enjoyed. I am going to get back to doing my reading because it is still Perlathon. But yeah, if you have read any of these and want to chat to me about them, then by all means, please do drop a comment down below. If you've liked this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, then heck, why don't you go ahead and do that too? <laughs> Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!